is Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. Today I want to show you how to make homemade fermented sauerkraut. So I'm going to start with some heads of cabbage. I usually do about three medium sized heads of cabbage for a gallon of homemade sauerkraut. We love eating fermented vegetables here at the farmhouse because it's like taking probiotics but ones that you make yourself. So there are live and active cultures already available on these cabbages um, just from coming out of the soil and those are what is going to pro proliferate through all of the ferment to make it a healthy probiotic. So you just can't duplicate that kind of thing in a lab. I'm going to begin by removing the outer leaves of the cabbage just because they will be great later to keep the cabbage below the brine and also just if you know I'm not exactly sure where those have been I'd like to remove the outer leaves. So I'm going to begin by coring the cabbage which basically just means getting out this inside part here that is tough and not so tasty. So I'm just going to cut around the middle and then I'm going to get my cabbage into chunks that will fit in my food processor. Now I like to use the tiny shredding blades like this because these get the cabbage really small and I think that it tastes better and it goes with anything at that size. I've made it larger, I've cut it coarse, but this is my favorite way to do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this cabbage going through my food processor and then I'll show you how I add the salt and get the brine going. to grab the biggest bowl I have to massage the shredded cabbage into the salt to create the brine. The biggest bowl I have is actually my stock pot, so I'm going to use that today. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the shredded cabbage. This part can get pretty messy, so be careful. And I'm going to empty it into my stock pot. Now, for three heads of medium cabbage, I'm going to add two tablespoons of sea salt. You can use any kind of sea salt. I'm using Himalayan pink salt. Just be sure not to use iodized table salt. Just massage the cabbage into the salt and you will notice right away juices forming to create the brine. This is what we're gonna push the cabbage under in our mason jars to keep it without oxygen. So in an environment without oxygen, mold cannot grow, and the salt will prevent any bad bacteria from growing, which will allow the good bacteria to continue on just multiplying throughout the ferment and will create a nice, healthy, probiotic-rich side dish. Now, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the amount of fermenting time. You can really do it to your preference. So some people ferment as little as three days and they feel like it's just plenty sour after that. I go more like a week. Some folks recommend four weeks. So there's really no exact science to it. You can taste it as it's sitting and see if your level of sourness has been reached. After the brine is nice and juicy, I'm gonna grab one of my half gallon mason jars to press this down into. Now I like to always do this process over the bowl because tons of cabbage is gonna fall right back out and I don't want the mess to get any bigger than it is. Making homemade sauerkraut really is simple. You only need two ingredients. That is cabbage and salt. Uh, you can get fancier, I've done it. 
Um, you can add herbs and spices and different vegetables. To be honest, my favorite is still just plain old green cabbage and salt. We eat this stuff with everything. Uh, we put it with eggs, pizza, any kinds of meat. It is a side dish with basically every single meal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the rest of the brine so it's nice and juicy and all of that cabbage can stay below the brine and not allow any mold to form. Remember those outer cabbage leaves we saved earlier? Those are perfect for keeping all the little bits of cabbage below the brine. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it up, press it down, and watch the liquid whoop, rise above it. I usually do two or three for good measure. You wanna be sure your jar is absolutely full. Um, I've seen problems with mold when it isn't. So if you need to add more than two or three, that's totally fine too. When this is all done fermenting, you will just remove those folded up leaves and your good sauerkraut will be waiting below. Okay, so for our weight, I use rocks. They sell fancy fermenting weights, but I just take a rock and I put it in a Ziploc bag, which I keep these rocks just below my sink for all my ferments. I just put it on top. Squeeze out any excess brine. I'm going to cover this loosely with a lid. If it's loose, that will allow any gases to escape that are a natural byproduct of the fermentation process, but keep any flies out and bugs and any other things. So I'm going to go ahead and set this on my counter for the next week or so. I went ahead and made three jars. Um, I had several heads of cabbage. Three medium heads of cabbage will make approximately one gallon and that would be two of these jars. And for that, I use two tablespoons of sea salt. So three heads of cabbage, two tablespoons of salt, one gallon of sauerkraut for one week. It really is just so simple. This sauerkraut has been sitting for two days and I wanted to point out something. One, that the color is already changing from the bright green to the more dull green that we expect from fermented sauerkraut. And two, that I placed it in this nine by 13 dish because a lot of times, actually always, the um, cabbage continues to sweat and produce more and more brine, and you don't want this all over your counter. So what I will do is I'll just empty this out and wash this, and then it'll sweat a little bit more. Sometimes there ends up not being enough liquid, and I'll just top it off with some filtered water. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this continue to sit until we need it. I have other sauerkrauts um, in the refrigerator already, so we don't really need it just yet. Um, I'll let it sit just as long as that takes to finish up. And a lot of times I'll start with one and then we won't have the others. I'll leave them on the counter until we're finished with this one. Just because the longer it sits, the more fermented it gets and the more probiotics are found in it. So just wanted to point this out and how the process is going two days in. 